Hi everybody, this is Dr. Nageshwar Rao, Assistant Professor of Physics, SRL CBR Government Degree College, Atanma Sinsayavada. Today we will discuss about Stern and Gerlach experiment as a part of atomic and molecular physics. This experiment was designed by Stern and Gerlach in 1921 to verify the vector atom model. We know vector atom model having two parts. One is spatial quantization and the second one is electron spin. These two parts are very, very important to explain the atomic structure. So that we said that certain Gerlach experiment provided an experimental verification of vector atom model. The experimental setup is shown this like this one. It contains an woven in which the silver material is kept. At high temperature, the silver beam will come outside. So this silver beam, which is passing through the two slits, so that the electron beam will come, or silver beam will come very narrow. This is passing through the inhomogeneous magnetic field. So due to this, the magnetic field intensity is not constant. Where it is an north pole side, the intensity of magnetic field is very, very high. At the north pole side, south pole side, the intensity of magnetic field is less. So that in the positive z axis, the intensity of magnetic field increases. When this silver beam is passing through this into in inhomogeneous magnetic field, the silver particles split up into two rays. The one beam is integrated or heated the photographic plate and along positive z-axis. Another beam heated the positive photographic plate on negative z-axis. This shows the experimental setup and explanation of this experiment. So the silver beam atoms were corrected into beam that passes through the few fan slits and then passes through an inhomogeneous magnetic field. Actually, this magnetic field is specially designed so that when along the positive z-axis, the intensity of magnetic field increases. So the beam having the magnetic field, which is received on a photographic plate, and overlapping the plane, we observe that magnetic field split this silver beam into two traces. One trace which is incident on the photographic plate on the positive z-axis, another beam is incident on the uh, positive z-axis on photographic plate. This means that the beam of silver beam is split into two distinct components when it is passing through the inhomogeneous magnetic field. Why it is happening? Why this silver beam, which is passing through the inhomogeneous magnetic field, split it into two discrete components? That is our discussion. In which one component we know that is, is moving, moving or bending along positive z axis, and the other beam, which is bending negative z-axis. This experiment was repeated number of times using different sources in the woven. Not only silver and hydrogen and the different molecules or different atoms are used in this woven and the same result was applied. Applied. Because in this, some of the material like so silver, it gives two traces or two discrete components in some of the materials, it gives more than two discrete components, depending on the structure of those atoms. So the magnet experiences a negative deflecting force on in a non homogeneous magnetic field. How much force? The force F is at is equal to minus to u by two z, which just shows the direction of magnetic force, and u gives the potential energy. That potential energy U is equal to minus mu into B, where B is the intensity of magnetic field and mu is the Bohr magnetron. 
and of course when you substitute this value into above equation the force of z is equal to minus mu z into the p by z. We know this is so having that is the initial bar beams contains number of atoms, millions of atoms. When these millions of atoms is passing through the magnetic field, gets the two orientations. One is along the positive z-axis and another along the negative z-axis. It is not the continuous band. But in this experiment, there was no band observed. We observed there is a two traces we observed on the photographic plate. This shows that atoms passing through the field were oriented in space discrete directions. So the beam deflected in certain discrete directions only and gave distinct traces on the field. So up to now, this our discussion about this experiment confirmed that quantization of space because when the beam which is passing through the inhomogeneous magnetic field it moves along the positive z-axis and a negative z-axis confirm this uh, spatial quantization that is first part of the vector atom model but what about second part so up to proposal of Electron spin by Willenbeck and Gold spin. This is not completely analyzed. After the proposal of electron spin by Willenbeck and Gold spin, the full significance was realized. So, how can we explain this electron spin? So that this experiment is also evidence for the existence of the electron spin. That is the second part of the vector atom model. Not only Stern and Gerlach, number of scientists did this experiment with different molecules or atoms. Phipps and Taylor in 1927 did this experiment using hydrogen atoms. We know each hydrogen atom contains only one electron. That electron also in the first orbit and L orbital. We know L orbital is nothing but it contains orbital angular momentum. L is equal to zero. Quantum number L is equal to zero per S orbital. If there is no spin to the electron, then the total angular momentum quantum number J is, can be right. We know J is equal to L plus S. So if we L is equal to zero, if there is no spin to the electron, S is equal to zero, so that J is equal to zero. That is the total quantum number, a total angular momentum quantum number, J is equal to zero. Then what about 2 j plus 1? When J is equal to zero, that is a 2j plus 1 is equal to 1. What is this importance of 2j plus 1? This 2j plus 1 shows the number of orientations or number of traces which is obtained on the photographic plate. So in this 2j plus 1 is equal to only 1. But we observed on the photographic plate these two traces. So the theoretical analysis did not tally with the experimental results. So that William Beck and Gower Smith proposed that each electron having spin half. Then what happens? If spin is half, the total and moment of quantum number J is equal to L plus S. L is equal to zero and S is equal to half. So that J is equal to L plus S is equal to half. So, J is equal to uh, half is nothing but the 2J plus 1 is equal to 2 into half plus 1. 2 into half is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So, it shows that 2J plus 1 is equal to 2 is nothing but it gives when the hydrogen atoms passing through the inhomogeneous magnetic field split into two discrete components. 
these two discrete components incident on the photographic plate so that we observed two traces. So theoretically, 2g plus 1 is equal to 2 gives two traces. And experimentally, there is two traces we obtain on the photographic plate. So this is verified of the vector atom model. Thank you.